Hello everyone. Uh, this is a game that I played <coughs> in my online uh, chess correspondence, uh, one of the tournaments that I played. And um, I've been doing not too badly uh, going up uh, in the ranks, uh, defeating um, some uh, people that are rated in the 1800 level, which I think is amazing. Um, uh, my opponent uh, was uh, 1551 playing the white pieces and at the time I was rated 1706 uh, and I'm playing the black pieces. Um, so the game uh, starts out with e4, e6, bishop c4, c5, d3, d5 and we we get into um, a French defense. It almost looks like a advance, a French advance variation. But unfortunately, um, to play the advance, um, sorry, the um, French defense advance variation, uh, these pawns would have to be here, and uh, my opponent's uh, dark square bishop should still be. Uh, back here but um, nonetheless um, uh, we decided to exchange pawns and then my opponent came down and uh, decided to uh, check my king and um, this is the last uh, book move um, in an online database that I had seen and um, this is where um, the last uh, book move was played. So I uh, continued on sacrificing uh, my bishop And here I'm trying to uh, castle my king, uh, king side or short castle. And uh, from this position here. Uh, my opponents are um, attacking my uh, the pawn here, but it doesn't quite make much uh, sense. I could advance the pawn up one if I wanted to, but instead I decided to um, fork my opponent, and I'm attacking my opponent's uh, king which needs to be uh, defended right away, so I'll end up winning the knight. And then again by taking the knight, I um, threaten another uh, piece, uh, the b2 pawn, I believe. And one of the things that I saw with the board that I really didn't like is this particular move here where my opponent could possibly come down with the queen pinning my dark square bishop to my king so now castling is out of the question because if I castle uh, king side or short castle I'll lose the dark square bishop and um, you know vice versa if I decided to um, castle queen side which doesn't make much sense because I don't have um, a lot of pawns there in order to defend my king, so it would make more sense to uh, castle a king side. I kind of look at um, castling um, sort of like a football game, you know, how you have uh, the linesman in the front defending the quarterback. That's sort of what I feel like sometimes with my king being the quarterback and trying to uh, do my best in order to uh, defend. 
uh, and that's why I decided to uh, castle kingside, protect my king, and I can also uh, start working on trying to uh, get my dark square bishop out of the way. And I kind of like this move uh, that I had made uh, just because I thought I could develop the dark square bishop out of the way. I gain a tempo automatically and just because uh, my opponent would then have to uh, defend the king. Um, and then of course, um, you know, my opponent could uh, move the king out of the way, which would prevent them from castling. Or if my opponent decided to do something silly, like maybe put the dark square bishop in front of the king, then I do have the pawn uh, in order to uh, capture the uh, dark square bishop. So the game continues. And this was an idea that I had. I thought I want to um, get my queen and my dark square bishop working together uh, so I could come down with a queen and target uh, h2 attacking my opponent's king. But the only problem is how do I get my opponent's knight out of the way that's defending um, this. But that being said, after uh, five minutes of um, analysis, again, uh, I am leaving uh, the analysis just for the position over the board, and it will show you um, what the computer uh, thought of the position and how deep it went. <laughs> again, I let my computer think for five minutes, and I think that's probably a lot better than um, a minute or two kind of um, gives it a bit of time to uh, look at the uh, position that it's analyzing um, it'll go back and forth to say no that's not good and then revisit those uh, positions and reevaluate the positional score much like you know you and I would do in um, our own games um, but just on a, a much uh, higher uh, uh, level. So my computer had said, you know, instead of moving my queen back, uh, there was the possibility of taking the pawn and passant. My opponent might come down and take the queen, thus defending the d3 pawn. I might come up and attack my opponent's dark square bishop, which is hanging. My opponent might decide to move the uh, dark square bishop back. And um, perhaps maybe I might um, um, offer an exchange of uh, knights. And there's, all, there's also uh, this as well, where it's being uh, forked by my knight uh, here and here. I'll just show this on the board. And um, I do have a double attack here, uh, attacking uh, the hanging pawn as well. So we might have an exchange of knights. My opponent might come down and try to uh, offer an exchange of pawns. And uh, my opponent might decide um, that uh, perhaps putting more pressure on the c5 pawn would be a good idea. Uh, both the dark square bishop and uh, the rook are attacking right now. And um, my queen is uh, p3. 
Pin trying to defend uh, my knight. So I, I don't have much of a choice other than to exchange queens. And perhaps after the exchange, my computer thought that maybe perhaps exchanging knight for dark square bishop would um, um, might be an option on the board. So far now, my opponent does have uh, control of the the D file, and my opponent has control of the F file as well. And um, my opponent's uh, pawns are uh, better developed than my own. Uh, I do have a lot of these pawns still sitting here, not being moved at all. And my my dark square bishop um, is developed, but it also is blocking my rook uh, that you know could possibly um, take aim at this hanging pawn here. But I feel like my opponent could pretty much defend this position. So we've gone a little bit too far. But still in all this was okay. It's not like my, um, my computer slapped me on the wrist, but had said that, you know, after these uh, moves that I had uh, are shown on the board that uh, my overall uh, position would have been better um, you know I do have an extra pawn here I have an extra pawn on the queen side as well that can be defended uh, it's just this rogue pawn I'd have to I guess kind of worry about a little bit well, that's just my opinion. So the game continues. And again, I'm trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to make this king? This is um, uh, me going into uh, checkmate mode, trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to win this game? So my opponent played this move, attacking my knight. I just simply moved my knight out of the way. And um, my uh, opponent decided to push the g6 pawn. And I'm not too sure if maybe it was just a matter of uh, not knowing what else to do on the board. You know, these pawns here are hung up. This pawn uh, can move, but um, I do have uh, two attackers to their one defender. So I don't know if maybe it was uh, my opponent didn't know what to do anymore. And sometimes I get like that to him, like I don't even know what to play anymore. So I took the free pawn. And uh, my opponent decided to move their king. And uh, again, I don't know why they moved the... I mean, sorry, not the king, the knight. So now I can uh, checkmate... or work on checkmating my opponent's king and um, I'm not quite sure why my opponent moved this knight um, maybe their idea was to uh, come down with the queen maybe put pressure on my hanging knight here um, maybe they saw uh, something that I hadn't seen but I didn't really think this was a very good uh, position so again, I'm uh, keeping an eye on this move here. And uh, my, um, my opponent moves back. And um, the game continues. Now, in this video, you probably already know uh, the move sequences that um, uh, are going to uh, take place. And um, 
I was going to say, can you find the move that I was going to uh, make? But uh, that's a moot point, so uh, I decided that maybe I'll switch gears and try to um, explain to you what I had seen over the board. And, you know, I wasn't quite looking at, at uh, the knight here. All I wanted was this free pawn here. And, you know, perhaps I thought, well, maybe I could attack my opponent's queen somehow. Um, and to, with the fact that I need my queen and my bishop active in order to get this uh, square is another reason why I had played this move too because now uh, my pieces are active again to hunt down my opponent's king and um, my opponent came down uh, trying to uh, get the knight out of the way and I just simply came up and uh, attacked my opponent's king so my knight is safe uh, for now and um, my opponent does need to defend the king immediately so I gain a tempo so my opponent came down and played this move and I was trying to figure out okay how can I win this game and I thought you know if I come over here with a, the knight uh, perhaps that my opponent would play this move, holding on to the position a little bit, and uh, perhaps then I'd move my queen up attacking the king, and then my opponent would uh, be able to sort of uh, run away. Um, so I thought, okay, let's go ahead and do this. And I thought to myself, too, maybe my opponent would get really excited because I'm sacking um, a knight, which is worth three pieces for a pawn that's one. And I think my opponent got really excited and decided, well, we'll just take the king. And this is a position that I had um, kind of worked out with um, sacrificing the knight. <coughs> And uh, I had to look at this position a little bit. And I think to, I had to think to myself, I think this is checkmate. And um, sure enough, uh, I did. I was able to win the game and checkmate my opponent. But um, I really think that perhaps if my opponent moved down with a rook instead of coming over with the king would have been a far better position. Still would have been... Uh, losing, but uh, would have been a better uh, overall position. Uh, and that's just my two cents. So, um, what I'll do here is I'll just show you the um, squares that I'm taking away from my opponent, and sometimes this helps me out when trying to figure out how to uh, mate my opponent. And um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, color in the squares in gray that my opponent's king can't move to. But just to give you um, another idea as to uh, how I've uh, essentially blocked my opponent's uh, king and there's no legal square my opponent can uh, move to. And, you know, this is something that um, I'm trying to do myself in order to get better at uh, learning uh, checkmates and um, uh, using um, my opponent's uh, uh, weaknesses against their king in order to uh, gain uh, a tempo, in order to uh, put even more pressure on my opponent. Um, just a lot of uh, things that I've been uh, trying to learn. Um, I hope you found this video fun and entertaining. Uh, I will do more of them. And uh, um, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video. Um, I 
again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have comments or things that you'd like to see on this video, by all means, let me know. Uh, you can let me know what you like about this channel, what you don't like about this channel, and uh, improvements that perhaps I could possibly make. Um, so um, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.